Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what is algebraic geometry. I'm still doing schemes uh, because schemes are a little bit more complicated to explain. Um, well, they're not that complicated, but it just takes a while to go through it. In particular, I promised the topology on it and I'm going to tell you about the topology now. And then to, in order to understand our main example, our running example, which I don't pull up today, we actually want to understand something slightly different than spec, which is usually called proj, which roughly is spec is the fn one, proj is the projective one. Well, the, that's that's what it's supposed to be, but not not today. So today we'll just focus on the topology on the fi world. So just as a reminder, we had this idea of spec R for a ring, the set the set of all uh, prime ideals. And yeah, it was just a set. And the scheme, by definition, is that plus the Zariski topology. I'm going to explain the Zariski topology uh, in this picture. And yeah, we had this motivation in the last slide. So today, Zariski topology for the set of all prime ideals. Okay, set of all prime ideals. That's what we want to do, and we want to put a topology on it. Yeah. And let's just give you an example of how the prime ideals look like in the easiest cases you can imagine, complex numbers or real numbers and polynomials in them. Okay, prime had this funny definition, but essentially you can think of prime you can't decompose any further, which is true in a lot of examples. It's not true in general, but it's true in a lot of examples in, in all examples I have <laughs> in this video anyway. And the prime ideals are then spent by the primes. Okay, so what we are looking for in Cx and Rx are every 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 polynomial that is not decomposed that doesn't decompose any further. Uh, ignore the zero thing. The zero thing is always prime in the setup. Ignore it. So and then for complex numbers, well, how can't you compose a, a decompose a polynomial anymore? If it's linear, sure you can't decompose it any further. But if it's degree two, whatever, something like this. Ax plus b, this is an a plus b, you can always just factor it in its two roots, whatever, uh, a1, let's say, and a2 are the two roots, and then you're done. And they're always complex numbers, you can always factor them. Similarly for a degree 3 equation, similarly for a degree 4 equation. So in, in the complex field, in the complex polynomial ring, the prime ideals are simply x, the, the linear factors, and that's it. Because you could always otherwise factor it finer, right? You could always find a root, pull it out. In the real case, the prime ideals are a little bit more exciting. So they are, of course, either those, that's as before, fine. We, now A is a real number instead of a complex number. But anyway, it could also be a degree 2 equation. Because whenever the degree 2 equation has honest complex numbers, um, and there was no reason to do quotation marks, has honest complex numbers, which are not real numbers, then uh, it's actually prime. You can't factor it any further. Yeah? So over the real numbers, you can't because you just can't. Well, they're complex numbers. You can't can't play this trick. And this happens. This is discriminant is negative. It's kind of an easy. Um, well, you know how to solve an equation of degree two. If you do that, and this guy is negative, you get some negative root, and that's uh, usually a complex number. That's always a complex number. It's always a complex number. And yeah, if you have a degree three equation, well, degree three kind of means it kind of starts, this is a graph of a degree three equation, starts at, let's say, minus infinity, and it ends at infinity. So by some kind of intermediate values theorem, you will find a real root. In this case, we have three real roots. As soon as you find a root, you split it off, get something fine. So degree three factors, degree five will factor, degree seven will factor, the odd ones will just factor by this easy, uh, odd polynomials always have a real root. And then you could show for degree 4 that it actually will always factor in degree 2. Like, you only need the square root of minus 1. Degree 6 will factor in degree 2 things. Degree 8 will factor in degree 2 things. And so on. So this is everything. Everything else will factor. So our set of prime ideals is very boring in this case. So we really just have the zero thing, which is like... Who cares? And then you have uh, whatever for every a essentially an x plus a here. Um, 
and I will explain the picture in a second. Then it will be an X plus B, X plus C, whatever. And this gets a little bit more exciting, but not too much. And yeah, again, I should say that the real reason is that we really care about two variable things in algebraic geometry or more variable things. And the one variable case is usually boring. And in this setting, the, it's, not, it's not that exciting. Well, all I said on this slide is essentially the fundamental theorem of algebra. Just for the real numbers, it gets a bit more complicated, but not, not too much. But in general, the picture is as follows. And we want to do the following. And I will draw a lot of those kind of lattice type pictures, which I really should orient, but I usually uh, ignore the orientation and I just read from bottom to top. So the set of ideals actually forms something nicer than just a set. It forms this type of post set structure, the lattice type structure, where every error here is given by inclusion. So if this is a, a Q and this is a P, then all I'm saying is P contains Q, right? So that, that's all it's saying. And every dot here represents a prime ideal. It doesn't matter what the ring is in this case. Every dot represents a prime ideal. Every edge is some form of inclusion. And what we will be looking at is something bigger than a given thing. Because you can somehow say, well, it's kind of an easy algebraic exercise that if you take, well, some start somewhere and you take everything that is bigger in this order, then they will form a topology. You can just verify the axioms of a topology. And that is exactly our the risky topology that we put on this kind of spec thing, right? So here's a picture of spec right, of some ring. And all I'm saying right now, let me repeat it, it has more structure than just a set. It's a post set and we will use this post set structure to define a topology by going upwards in the picture. That's what we are going to do uh, right now. So define an apology that the closed sets are exactly the guys where you go uh, upwards. And this is exactly the wrong way around. They're exactly the guys where you go upwards. Right? So the, um, in my picture here, this is V of S. And V of S is the same notation as before. So the red one here, maybe I should just put it in red. The red one is V of S, right? the, the, everything above. And this defines the closed sets. So again, careful, our risky topology is usually defined over the closed sets. So if you want to verify that this defines a topology, you need to verify the axioms of closed sets in a topology, not of open sets, closed sets. Anyway, you can just do that, um, keeping this picture in mind. It's not, it's not ultra difficult. So this defines a topology, and this is the, the risky topology on uh, this beast spec R. And that and indeed can uh, verify that this is a Zariski topology. It's kind of an interesting thing. So again, I like to really just draw a graph usually, or well, whatever. So if this is a bad color, um, I can just change that to, to maybe something black, which is easier to see. So every point, as I said, represents a prime ideal, and then there will be some arrow somewhere, uh, pointing from somewhere to somewhere, something like that, whatever. Something like this. Okay, fine, something like here, nicer. And um, the closed points, kind of fun here is, kind of a little bit different from what you're used to, points don't need to be closed. Points are closed exactly if they are in the, at the top of the chain. And a point is just the, the prime ideal itself. And at the top of the chain, because then the closed set associated to it is just itself. And kind of the opposite of that picture is usually called, what? Well, the, the ones at the top are the closed points. The one at the bottom are called the generic points. And they're kind of the two extremes in this type of picture. And I usually like to draw those uh, very finite pictures, but this hopefully illustrates that it's usually not finite. It's very large sometimes, right? There are infinitely many, um, but it's very boring in this case. So here, all of these ones are kind of maximal. So all of these ones are closed. Here, all of them are closed as well. But in general, it doesn't need to be the case. There should be points which are not uh, closed at all. Yeah, and this is kind of the picture I have in mind. So in this Zariski topology, this one is a good picture. We always go upwards and the closed sets are everything that you catch if you go upwards. And I should make this picture, as you can see here, all of these points are included, right? This point, because here's an edge, this point, because here's an edge, this point, because here's an edge. 
and then you can just take the double edges if you want to go to the top point. So everything above, those are uh, the closed sets in this um, topology. So let me give you an example. So here is a picture of Z x, right? Not R x or Q x. R x and Q x are too easy. Somehow they get a little bit boring. But if you do something like Z x, it already gets more interesting because here is a classification of not so difficult to show if you want to do it yourself. Um, the classification of prime ideals in Z x. Okay, zero, fine. I always like to ignore zero. Sure, zero is a prime ideal. And then fx for an irreducible polynomial, you can't split it further, irreducible polynomial, or p, where p is a prime number, yeah, yeah, looks right, or you could put them together under the condition that f is already also irreducible mod p. So you can kind of see that f here, they take some irreducible polynomial, and then you just go all the way, and sometimes you hit a prime where it's also irreducible, and you get the corresponding uh, ideals p comma f, yeah, like like in this case, and then you have the prime ideals because spec c just sits in uh, spec z of x, and the closure of those uh, would be, for example, p f, and then you have p here and f here, so um, yeah, p f is the maximal one, p f is uh, was a closed point in this space. Anyway, so we're going to study this a little bit further, but now, as you can already tell, it gets way more abstract. You really need to think about lattices and ideals of lattices, but hopefully it's not too bad and I will spend a lot of time trying to explain what's going on. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.